Hello, welcome to Adopt and Listen. Thank you for deciding to watch this video. Um, I appreciate that. Um, today, I just want to talk about cardiology, in addition to pharmacology, in addition to select order to apply, and uh, put the flavor of um, next generation kind of question to that, in addition to what uh, usually you have the traditional. I think pharmacology is very, very important uh, for your exams. You can't go to the exams without having a solid foundation of uh, pharmacology. If you want to know uh, more about cardio, cardiology, pharmacology, uh, just uh, check the uh, YouTube site and you'll see more videos on that. So today, let's get to it and let me show you what I want to portray. So um, this is a simple question, but I put the uh, next generation flavor to it, but it's the same content that I'm trying to portray. You can, this is the same thing for um traditional one so you have a client and uh, they will give you a question the way i do my question in the adapt endless way is to read backward select all that apply every question read backward which of the following the next you expect on assessment based on the diagnosis given so what is an uh your expectation or certain things you will see when you assess the patient so our acts is an assessment okay and we do a selected apply so what is the case uh, a client was di evaluated five days ago, diagnosed with acute myocardial infarction. Ten days later, patient developed new S3. Heart failure was suspected. And therefore, which of the following the next should expect on the assessment based on diagnosis given? Um, select or apply. In an adaptive and close way, you find your acts. We know our case. And then your buzzwords is um expected finding on assessment. Then before you answer the question, you got to develop your content. This is your heart. It's made up of uh, four um, basically chambers, basically. And this is the left side, right side. When the heart fail, it cannot pump well. It cannot function well. Either it's holding you on to too much blood or it cannot pump the blood out. And therefore, uh, for the left side, the left, this is the lung. The left receive blood from the lung. When the left side fail, your number one symptoms is a pulmonary symptoms. So most of the symptoms will be from your lung. But then there's one thing you have to know. The heart also pump blood into the rest of the body. Therefore, if you have left heart, uh, heart failure, you're going to have hypoperfusion. People don't talk about this too much, but you're going to have hypoperfusion of your system. Therefore, any signs of hypoperfusion is a form of left heart failure, like low urine output, okay, cold extremities, okay, uh, fatigue. So if they put it there, yeah, these are the things you should start thinking that this is the left heart fail uh, failure symptoms. The right side receive blood from the systemic body. Therefore, if the right side cannot pump, you have what we call systemic congestion. So those are the, so you see symptoms of systemic injection. These are the key facts you will take with you to answer the question. I'm looking for systemic conjunction on the right side and on the left side, I'm looking for hyperperfusion symptoms and what? And pulmonary symptoms. Remember, I'm not give, listing symptoms. I'm just paying attention to the pathophysiology. I'm using that. I don't want to memorize symptoms because if I memorize symptoms and I forget one of them, I can't answer the question. So just for pay attention to the pathophysiology. I'm looking for what? Pulmonary symptoms in the left and the hyperperfusion symptoms and the right side systemic conjunction. Therefore, one. A new S3 is a what? Mostly consistent with the heart failure, but mostly on the left side. Okay. Paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. That means you, the patient will wake up in the middle of the night, shortness of breath. That is the early signs of a heart failure from um, what is a pulmonary symptom. So it has to fall from the left side. Leg edema. There is no um, pulmonary symptoms and there is no hypoperfusion. Therefore, it has to be right side. Hepatomegaly. There is no hypoperfusion. There's no pulmonary symptoms, therefore it has to be right side. And it's consistent with the right side because the liver sends all its blood to the right side of the heart through uh, inferior vena cava. And 
therefore, when the right side is failing, the liver will get congested. CVP, this is systemic vascular pressure or systemic venous pressure. Your pressure usually in your veins are between two to eight millimeter per mercury. A 20 is too high. It tells me there's blood backing up on the right side. And this is consistent with the right heart failure. The reason why is your superior venae cava, that is the big vein, receive blood from your head. And then it connects to the IJ, inferior uh, uh, internal juggler. And if this um, blood in the SV superior vena cava is congested, it goes to the IJ, internal juggler, and the pressure too goes up. Uh, and then that is consistent with the systemic vascular uh, pressure, basically, or venous pressure. And therefore, this is right side. This relates to that. JVP, a jungler vein distension is the exam that you see. But JVP is the pressure. So if you have a pressure of three, that is really, really low or normal. So um, you, you can see that the pressure is low and is normal. So it's within the normal range. Um, so this one doesn't fall that. Any Jugular vein pressure of three is a normal range and it's not consistent with any of them. There's no failure. This is a normal pressure. Chronic cough. Chronic cough is the early signs of what? Um, Left-sided uh, failure. Most people who have had failure start coughing. That's why paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is the beginning early signs of that. Therefore, this is what? A pulmonary symptoms. I'll choose this one. Fatigue is a forward blood flow, hypoperfusion. Your blood is not getting, your body is not getting blood, no oxygen. You're getting tired all the time. So left side. Low urine output, hypoperfusion. Your kidney is not seeing blood, therefore your urine output will go down. So left side. So once again, the symptoms for the left, heart failure, S3, paroxysmal, nocturnal dyspnea, and like you said, JVP of three is normal. Chronic cough, fatigue, and low urine output. And for the right side, we have these three. So this is how you solve select or apply. We are not comparing anything. We're just selecting based on our pathophysiology, and we're using it to answer the question. Okay. So next one. And then the next anticipate. The following medication to be included in the care, select or in the care plan, select all that apply. So select all that apply, what medication you the next anticipate. You have to know heart failure medication. But the best way to remember it is we have heart failure. Okay. So there's a couple of things. Too much fluid, the heart is holding on to fluid. Or it can pump. This is the way I see it. And later on, remodeling. Okay. Whenever you see a heart failure pharmacology, this is what you have to write. Holding on too much fluid, can't pump, and need to be remodeled because the heart is now dilated, you know. Therefore, if I'm holding on to too much fluid, I need to get rid of it. So I'll use my diuretics. I have a pump issue. I need something that can pump my heart, right? And I need remodeling, some medication that will help with remodeling. That's all. So your answer choice, you just see if you fall under this, okay? Bumitinide, number one, why, right? What is that? Is it diuretic? Is it furosemide? Is it loop diuretic? What we what is it going to do? It's going to get rid of your fluid. So we select that. The joxin, you control your rate, it you increase some contractility. It does so many things to help with the pump too. So I'm picking it. As a sulfide, what is that? It's related to fluid that in a different way, okay? It's not getting rid of the fluid. It's just preventing less blood going to the heart. It's just telling the heart, I'll give you time to recover while I hold on to the fluid. It's venous, basically decreases venous resistance, 
okay, decrease venous resistance. And therefore, what it does is increase venous capacitance. It makes the vein bigger and blood can stay in the vein for a long time. It can hold it for a long time. And therefore, less blood going to the heart and the heart uh, can do its function. So it's a venal dilator, increasing venous capacities, capacitance by decreasing venous resistance and that help with the heart failure. So we have to choose that. Who is that? Chlorotalidon. What is that? Chlorotalidon. So this is hydrochlorothiazide friend. It's also a diuretic. It will help get rid of the fluid and therefore we're choosing it. Mirinon. This is also a direct a, a, um, a, a nitrate. So this is also a nitrate. And what it, we use it for is the end stage CHF. If you can't do anything at all, this is the last resort. So Mirinon is an end stage um, CHF um, medication that we use. And it's also a, a, a nitrate. And therefore, that will prevent blood going to the heart. You hold on to the vein, increase the venous capacity, decrease the venous resistance. So we got to choose it. And then ACE inhibitor. This is a tricky one. Your heart needs remodeling. Okay, ACE inhibitor. Any heart problem, ACE is always a good choice. They help with the remodeling if you have a heart attack. They help with remodeling if you have a heart failure. So it is a very good medication to have. And therefore, all of them um, is expected um, to be used. So I said this to know that sometimes you can have five questions um, and all of them will be right. So we have a loop diuretic, we have the joxin, we have a couple of nitrates and a regular diuretic and a, a remodeling. So this is all uh, in medications you should know when they give you a lot of questions. Um, and this is the pharmacology for that. Um, thank you for listening and uh, all the best of luck. Good luck in your exams.